Oh, you go ahead and turn down the playback. There you go. Why do we have a shot like that? Here we go. Welcome back to the trailer park for a very special Friday hangout. And uh, I have a very special guest with me. You know him from the chat as Mastermind Roman. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited to have you here. I don't normally do Friday shows. As you know, I'm normally plinking away, working to build uh, Beauty and the Boomer, but I'm trying to do more of a community oriented, you know, get to know everybody. Like in the chat, there's so many of us that come together. And when we come together in a chat, man, we take over a chat. I see it happen at Savvy's. I see it happen at Richie Medhurst. I see it in the Jimmy Dore chat. I love it. And it's because we're so like minded and there's so many topics to talk about. I saw you hanging out with eric t red and uh his son and of course oz the boomer my partner in crime awesome show it was it was a great show it was a fun hangout and and i was like oh i gotta have a conversation with mastermind and <laughs> i think right. we have a lot of things in common i think uh we see things very uh, very uh, similar so i i just brought like visual cues i figure well, let's get stoned and shoot the shit today right on i can do that nice. i've got ability uh, I'll, I got all the chats up. I see Jonas hanging out over on the rock fin with Teresa. Thanks for joining us, guys. And then uh, the rumble is up. Of course, we're on X today in a couple of different places. But we've got uh, Old Man Baker hanging out on YouTube along with Steve Guy. Kate. Hey, Kate. Kate's here. Uh, let's see. Mastermind's here, of course. And uh, smoke them. Smoke them. Or some weeds. Oh, yeah. Smoking the weeds. Smoking the weeds. That's a Friday. That's what we do here on, on Fridays. Uh, Cold Fusion Games hanging out too. So, how's it going today? Doing great, doing great. I'm excited to be here with hang out with you. And then, speaking of Eric T, I'm going to be doing his show later on tonight. In, nice. Uh, seven hours or so. So that would be fun. hours. Uh, yeah, I, the time zones just melt my mind. Uh, every There's time somebody uh, asks me what times you're on, I'll say I put somehow I put the East Coast east of the pacific or west of the pacific <laughs> right. and get it backwards i know i do nobody too. ever wants no mountain time anyway so i actually have an east coast converter in my bookmarks because like so yeah. many of our friends are on the east coast and you know the, i have to be out I, I don't want to mess it up so right yeah. yeah i need to find a metal shortcut instead of counting on my fingers right that's my cue yeah smoke them if you got them that's what we're doing it's buffering kate oh no try refreshing uh, we look good where we're at. So try refreshing where you're at. Maybe you're you're traveling, aren't you? Maybe you got bad signal. Hey, Peace Dub's in the house. What's up, Peace Dub? Yeah, I just brought some visual cues. I know you have some notes of some things you want to talk about. Um, yeah, we'll just throw a topic out there and freaking go for it. I, I came across this meme uh, the other day. You know, I'm I'm the queen of memes. <laughs> and I have meme alley in my show. And uh, President Nixon opens Congress to lobbyists October 26, 1970. Now, this was like four and a half years before I was born. Dinner is served. Yeah. Uh, how screwed are we because of the lobbyists? Well, and that was, I always thought the beginning of the cold coup, as I like to call it, started in 63. Mm -hmm. But I think that was the end of it. I think the start of the cold coup was what was that 1918 Woodrow Wilson started right, right. I agree I totally agree. Right? Yeah, totally that agree right started the cold that guy was know. so owned yeah that's when they shoved the Federal Reserve down our throats mm -hmm. right yeah. yep and so yeah in 63, and 63 is of course Kennedy is killed now we've been hearing that Kennedy was just days away from making APEC uh, register as a yeah. foreign entity in October yeah in October, October that there's the government was sending AZC is I think what it was at the time was sending yeah. them the paperwork saying, Hey, fill this out. You're a foreign agent. You got to fill this paperwork out. And by December, then the government saying, Hey, this APAC doesn't have to register at all. Now, you know, right. what happened in between those two dates, yeah, well, and it's Israel just seems to be an extension of us. I mean, we see that by our representatives in Congress that would rather wear Israel's colors to work than our colors, you know? Well, like, yeah, when Fetterman's walking down the hall waving that little oh, flag. Oh, God, Fetterman. Man, that if, guy. If did that with the Palestinian flag, she gets sanctioned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I have a clip uh, lined up for tomorrow night's show of AOC. Um, 
saying how she's avoided APEC, but how APEC has came for all of the squad members, right? <laughs> and she's crying because, oh, they're going to come for us. Should we even freaking care that they're going to come for those people? They're supposed to be our representatives, right? Right, yeah. They have our back, so we're supposed to have their back. Is that, is that uh, the, the, of course are, the vote is all I'm going to say about that. Right, I don't, I'm yeah. not going to give two shits because they yeah. could have forced the vote not once, not twice, like three different damn times now. So tell them to force the pack. That's what they need to force do. Force the pack. She's like, we've avoided big money. I mm -hmm. don't think they have. I have a feeling they're just taking it through some backdoor pack and, and they're not putting it out there. The, you know, I worked inside of the politics. When I first hit the ground as an activist, the first thing I did was join my local Democrats. And uh, so I started working on all these action committees and, you know, the PACs. And that's the dark money yeah, in I fucking mean. politics. It's lobbyists yeah. and it's the PACs. They go hand in hand. And uh, I, I would bet dollars to nothing, you know, that somewhere somehow the squad has taken APEC money even though they're not taking it directly into their campaigns yes yes it's the pro that's it's a constitutional thing it's the Constitution was a, a socialist document that was stretched around a capitalist skeleton yeah yeah, yeah. so even though the Constitution talks about individual rights the government spends all day, every day, trying to figure out how they can circumvent those rights that they're supposed to be protecting. AOC supporting Joe Biden <laughs> is supporting APAC. So yeah, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, get out of here. You're still selling out. Oh, yeah. Tyrannical government. The uh, what did they keep? Trump's a fascist authoritarian. Like, <laughs> right. For the fascists. What are you talking about? If AOC really cared, she could super glue her hand to the gavel up there <laughs> until they stop shooting you know yeah, yeah. do something raise a ruckus well did you see this morning that uh the un via the u.s uh vetoed another ceasefire because or no it wasn't us we put it forward uh russia and china vetoed it and it's because of the language that the u.s put in there condemning hamas pinning right. this all on Hamas and poor Israel, October right. 7th. And uh, it, now Israel they can make do any that reparations. Fake, right. Now they can do that fake outrage, though. Of, <laughs> oh, my God. China and Russia turned down a ceasefire. How many goddamn ceasefires have we turned down in, some, in the last, you know, so many months? So, I, I, yeah, they set this one up so they can beat the drum on it. Well, what they really need to do is define what Hamas is, because if, it's, if Hamas is anti-Zionist, there's a lot more Hamas than they think there are. Right, right. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think because they use Hamas to define everything, right? Yeah, they love to say it that way. Uh, uh, yeah, the APEC plus a DNC equals Democrats. Absolutely, but it's not. It look at the uh, Republican held the APEC lobby. I mean, that Candace Owens just left the Daily Wire today because of that APEC lobbyist on the right. They're yeah. just as embedded. I, as the Democrats, I think actually there's more of the right that's owned by OPEC than the left. Well, sure, that's where the money is. I think we saw that with that TikTok vote last week, right? right. I mean, more Democrats actually voted against it than Republicans did. Well, yeah. Plus, they've got the Donald Trump could actually, if he started pulling for TikTok and started pushing away from Israel, it'd be slam dunk. I not saying that it, not saying that it isn't all right. Jared Kushner is his, is his son. Of right, right, yeah. right. He, wa right, he right. wants to make sure they build the Kushner pier off the coast of Gaza. <laughs> Fuck. Is that what it's going to be called? Well, what, why not? What else would you call it? Well, isn't his daddy going to be the next PM or some shit <sighs> over there? President? I don't know. I don't know their, right. their structure over there, but... Mm. Yeah, I did hear that he's in the next in web. line. Yeah, it is a tangled web. And they're all owned by Israel. But why is that? And you got to go back to the religious dogma that has, uh, you know, gripped this country for two over 200 years, probably since the inception, 275 years, whatever. It's that we have to support Israel, the rebuilding of an Israel in order for the second coming of Christ. And uh and so that's that that swept up all of the Christian religions, right? right? Right, right. Well, and that's that's why it's not hard to imagine that there are more Christian Zionists than in America than yeah. there are Jews on the planet. That's right. 
not right. just counting the Zionists. All One Jews Christians counting, were, exactly. Right. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I looked at eight hours of the history of the Middle East last night. Now I slept in and out through a lot of it. But I kept waking up listening. I listened from the 1800s on, and um, yeah, you know, it's always been done in the name of religion. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's, does it once you start listening to that stuff? It, you start thinking about what they call the Hannibal Directive, then it starts making sense that this really is. My uh, little catchphrase slogan was uh, from the Jordan to the Mediterranean, Israel is the throne of Satan. Yeah. It's a sloppy rhyme. But <laughs> it's a sloppy it's a point, rhyme. Right? It's globally, a globally right. the throne of Satan, if you right. ask me. Uh, and it gives us such disgusting characters as like Smooley and, <laughs> you know. Yeah, right. RFK, he's making some traction, actually. Well, the mainstream media wants you to believe that he is. But uh, there's a lot of uh, the Bernie supporters that have just fallen for RFK Jr. And, you know, have their ears plugged, la, 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 la. I don't want right. to hear anything bad because he said vaccines are bad, you know, like. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they get that one catch for that one wedge issue, that's all you got to do is get somebody hooked on their ear. That one Here, wedge issue doesn't see. matter what it is. That wedge issue will keep them looking at the actual wedge that needs to be applied. That's the 99 to 1 wedge. Right. Right. No, you're right. And it, it is the 99 to 1. But, uh, you know, we get swept up in the left right uh, paradigm and uh, it's an election year. So, so many of our friends and neighbors are doing that to us. And I just keep screaming. It's a duopoly. It is the same, you know, two wings of the same damn bird. It's owned by corporate lobbyists. It's owned by the, you know, the one percent. And until we realize that this is, cla or, you know, is us against them. Uh, and, and Bernie yeah. kind of had that message, right? Bernie brought that message in the beginning of his campaign. Uh, right. He, we're going we're gonna to break free from the Democratic. Right. Yeah. 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 We're going to start a revolution. <laughs> and, and then uh, come August of 2016, I'm like, well, I was, I, I meant, you know, I didn't, I meant a political <laughs> revolution. <laughs> you need to vote for Hillary at the we end. We already of made the day. that revolution. We've been all the way around the circle. Now we're back where we started. Oh my God. You know, I lived all that. Cause I went in, I was in Philadelphia. I was a delegate. So I was inside all of the state conventions. I saw the biases and the, the uh, suppression and the rigging that the democratic party was doing from the inside, right. at, you know, as uh, an elected PCO fighting back against them and everybody, I mean, okay. From the trailer parks point of view, I'm just going about my business, going to my minimum wage fucking job, trying to make ends meet and keep a roof on the table and my kids fed. Right. I'm I'm pr I'm voting. So therefore, I'm doing my part in politics. I kind of listen to politics, but, you know, just the headlines. Right. That was most of America. And then uh, 2016 comes around and you start realizing that, hey, you know, maybe I should do more than just vote. So, but I still had this thought of uh, we have this democratic process in this country where you can go and join your local democratic party and you can get involved and you can change things and you can get out the vote and you can do these things. But then once you go on the inside, you realize that is a yeah, fucking yeah, lie yeah, and a yeah. joke. That's yeah, not well, how it works. I have seared in my memory that the picture of the woman during that was given the delegates to Hillary. There's a woman behind her with a pink notepad that says Bernie won all 99 counties, something, whatever it was. That just that image of seared in my, that's when I was like, oh, so voting is just a joke. There's really no point to vote for a Democrat if they can, if there's a super delic. I think the Democratic Party should be forced to remove the word democracy from their name while they still have super delegates. I think they should Absolutely. be sued for false advertising. I ran a campaign where we were contacting the delegates in the summer of 2016 going into the DNC campaign. And we had to do it covertly because if they got found out by the Democratic Party that we had reached out to them and asked them to switch their vote to Bernie Sanders, you know, that uh, they could have their credentials stripped. 
Yeah, it, it, I mean, it was the most insane shit being at that convention. Like they were, they were hiring seat fillers. Uh, they were turning on white noise to drown out uh, right. the Bernie people. Like, I mean, the voice uh, votes that we saw around the country. The anniversary of Roberta's rules is coming up now. That was April fourteenth, twenty sixteen. That was the Nevada um, caucus when they did the voice vote. Right, all those in favor uh, say yay, and it means uh, they told. Yeah. Totally won that vote. She gaveled them down. They had a line of police officers there, right? The police just start walking at them. This is a Democratic caucus. Right. And uh, that's, of course, when the infamous Bernie Bros was uh, created because uh, somebody moved a chair and then, remember, they were throwing chairs and then uh, all of the mainstream was, media ran with it. it slid a chair across the floor. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then, yeah, Rachel Meadows and everybody had to weigh in. Debbie Washington Schultz. Oh, my God. They're so violent. Those Bernie Bernie bros throwing chairs. It, the whole propaganda machine. I, I I don't even turn on the TV anymore. I really oh, don't no, because no. there's yeah. no reason to. No. I mean, anything I watch is going to be on YouTube or you know on the internet, and the propaganda I, you would get from mainstream. God bless yeah. case study QB because I'd have no fucking case. idea. I know. None of that. I would have no idea what the hot shit spot. Like. There's there's a lot of good work being done out there in the short format media. Absolutely, and you know I I, I should Nick, be putting stuff out. It's just hard. It's hard to cut it. I, I told Nick on RBN. I think he's the reason that they were trying to pass this TikTok bill is because of his hot spots. Damn it, Nick! Look what you Damn did. It, now. Nick, look what you did. Right? No, and they need to keep doing it. Keep yeah, doing it. Absolutely. And you know, just because I can't make those cuts, I'm still I run their cuts on my shows to show people, hey, look at this. In case you missed it, because I have a, a little bit older crowd. They don't so much do the TikTok or the the X, you know, but they like getting the information. Information that I'm showing them that I'm bringing from TikTok. And, no, I, and absolutely. X. I've made that point where, you know, the TikTok, it, they keep saying it's all the kids that are doing the TikToks and stuff. But I see TikToks all the time. I see, you know, yeah. when you're on YouTube or uh, mm -hmm. the, even though they turn them into shorts or, yep. uh, and then they'll get shown Even Facebook has a short format. They all have their right. own short format now, right? Right. So yeah, they'll if they're good, CIA they'll see book. Way all the way across social media. Right, right. right. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, we know the mainstream media is a joke or the Rachel Maddow show. Why will Rachel Maddow not go away? Because she's a good mm -hmm. puppet, right? That's, oh, that's absolutely. absolutely. That's the end of it. You, you got to be a good liar. You got to, uh, you know, prove that you'll uh, uphold the, whatever the narrative is that the machine wants out there. And, uh, you know, we say we, we call them so many different things. The machine, the one person that, you know, there's an infamous amount of different names uh, that, and euphemisms that we use about them. But ultimately, you know, all of mainstream media and Western media is completely bought and owned. I mean, if that wasn't proven in 2016 with Trump and your fake news news i uh, you know i don't know what else would have been uh let's see i got a cia thing here did you see this what do you think about the clones and the cia mass you think that's a real thing or you think that's just a conspiracy theory is that a mouth it's got a that, second mouth there. Okay, so it looks like it's this part, and it uh, looks like it's the part of the mask just didn't oh, get all right. the that, tucked in. That, here, that, let me pull true. it up again. Yeah. Scooby Doo's is what the Scooby Doo's. <laughs> right? Yeah, here, let me put it oh, down. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I, you know, we, we've seen these. We, uh, if you remember oh back God, when. Oh, my God, it really does. Uh, yeah, when Bush was president, the uh, head of the CIA's um, clandestine, you know, makeup department, she wore one of those masks into uh, meet the president and do do Ben. But you know, come on, it was Bush. <laughs> it was easy. <laughs> to do Bush. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, I mean, we've seen these masks. They're absolutely real. Uh, they use them all the time. So, right. you know, we there's one with Biden where he's kind of got the back of his neck and you can kind of see, like, I don't know. Do you think they're using body doubles or these masks? Well, I would think if they're using body doubles, they would use somebody that could walk better. <laughs> right? That's what I'm like. No fucking way. Why, why would you get a double that can fall upstairs? Right. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. 
I love the clone theories too, right? Or, oh, they're making clones. Did you see the the clone of uh, Jamie Fox, right? When he's uh, he died, and then they brought a clone back. Like, but the thing is, is when you go down these rabbit holes about this type of technology, a lot of times the technology is there. Yeah, right. The military had it ten years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything you could dream about, the military had ten years ago. 30 years ago right. is what they normally tell right. us. If Jason Burmis has a saying that, you know, if they're telling about us now, it's been out for, they've had it for 30 years. So right. yeah, that's for sure. Well, t- speaking of technology, I brought us this clip. Okay, so Slow News Day tweeted this out. And of course, Slow News Day says, we truly live in the dumbest of all possible timelines. Breaking, Elon Musk Neuralink demonstrates first person who can control a computer and play video games just by thinking. Let's play this clip here. Get us, okay. There we go. I think it just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Um, basically, it was like uh, using the force on a cursor <laughs> and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where I wanted it to, um, which was such a wild. So are you excited to have uh, Elon Musk control your mastermind? Ooh, I think Elon was probably the first one to get it done. I think that guy's probably the too. second one. I knew we had a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. I think Masad, Masad already figured out how to uh, hack his neural link. So. <laughs> Masad already <laughs> hacked him. Yeah, they did. They're, they just push a button and he comes <laughs> calling, right? Right. Uh, yeah, you know, they have this one now they're talking about that can implant right here. And apparently right before you speak, there's something that processes right here, that form. And so anyways, basically you could surf the net with it. And so it would be like talking and it's already in play. They already have it there. It's already, it's, it's similar uh, horrifying. to- Horrifying. Isn't that horrifying? Horrifying. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Well, it, won't that interfere with the bug in my teeth, the CIA bug in my <laughs> tooth? So getting... uh, you, they have that technology. It's called, uh, um, what is it, skull technology, mm-hmm. where they uh, can beam sound mm-hmm. into your head. It reminds me of that movie from the 80s where there uh, it was a joke. They put something in his braces and he thought God was talking to him, right? Uh, but yeah. Uh, Cal, uh, Val Kilmer. Uh, weird science. Was, no, no, it wasn't weird science. No, it, it was, was like the other science. one. Yes. Know, Val Kilmer right. was. Uh, it was a young Val Kilmer. Too. Oh, yes. Yeah, that the was a great movie. Popcorn. Oh, it filled the house full of yeah, popcorn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody in the chat will tell us what movie that was. Real uh, genius. Real genius. That's I, I beat part. you all. I love the pop culture uh, references. If you haven't noticed, I I do a lot of pop culture <laughs> at the trailer park because we were that's what we were raised on. I mean, I'm an American oh. who was asleep and, uh, you know, just following the American dream. So I was consuming pop culture for 40 years of my life. So, of course, I'm going to regurgitate it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would go school, go Thanks. home, or I do sports and then go home right. and watch TV yep. and go to bed. Yeah, I did. I did fast forwards too. Like that, my parents had that thought that if you keep kids busy, then they don't get in trouble, which absolutely didn't fucking work for them. But right. it kept me busy. That's how you find your gang. Yeah, That's right. how I found stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I was always busy from like five in the morning till eight o'clock at night as a kid. But yeah, the American, good all American, uh, you know, high school. That's what you do. Well, and that's even we would do football. We do two a day. So, I, you know, you go in early and, yeah, you right. go to school, and then you do practice after it, you know, looking back, I was like, why in the hell would I beat my body twice a day yeah. just to play, you know, 90 minutes on a Friday night or, you know. Well, and that's why so many people peak in high school, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, that, Cause that's a, that's an, an actual drain on the, body the chi the soul you, you put a lot of work in oh i messed that my game. knee up as a cheerleader in high school and i've had seven surgeries since then and it all started on a freaking field performing you know right. and so yeah totally i get how it breaks people down technology i uh, fucking elon he's a huge asshole <laughs> i mean do you mm-hmm. think elon's a cia op i think... i mean a Dar- we know he's darpa up right i mean i think he's 100 percent controlled by the military industrial complex yeah let me put on my tin foil sunglasses here. nice <laughs> they're, they're my rowdy roddy piper glass i just wanted to make sure i love rowdy 
I love Rob. So I got a theory that all the the Twitter, even the Tesla, all that stuff, that's just cover for his boring company. I think he's digging ten, uh, cities underground for the government. That's where he's making his money. That's why he's now the richest person on the planet. I love that. I love that. That's a great freaking theory. And you know what? It's absolutely true. I, I drove over the construction of the Denver airport in the 90s. And it was so fucking mind-blowingly massive. And then to hear what we hear about the Denver airport right. now and the tunnels, the 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 tunnel city that's under there for no other reason than storage. I mean, they just say it's storage, right? Right. And even when you go in there, they'll they shove it in your face. They got all the little gargoyles and the paint the weird yeah. ass paintings in yeah, there. Yeah, all the Illuminati like, shit. Oh, yeah, they're just storage. leaning into it, right? They're just right. leaning into the joke, but maybe it's it's an airport. Maybe that's not a good place to make a joke in the first place. You know, that's not a well. You're um, not allowed to joke about a, a, a bomb in the yeah, airport, yeah, right? Yeah, it, this is that's a chuckle factory. Let's make jokes about uh, hijacking and stuff. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. Yeah. And we just laugh at no it because intended. Americans are so immersed in the pop culture and consumed by Hollywood that we think, oh yeah, they are just leaning into it, right? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just to make you laugh. Yeah, I we hear about all of these uh, uber rich that are digging these damn uh, dumbs, these deep underground military mm -hmm. bunkers, and it makes you wonder what's coming. We're hearing a lot of hype around this damn eclipse that's coming on April 8th, and I got another report for uh, my Monday show on it. There is so much National Guard that is being called up around the fucking country, and it's not just the National Guard's going to be on standby. It's a lot of telecommunication companies that are getting involved in it. And and now we're hearing rumblings of a biological uh, attack. Right. And then we've got Ron Paul out there talking about a black swan event. We uh, you know, we have everybody freaking out because the border's been wide open and uh, all of our enemies could be here. Right. You should be scared. Be in fear because the terror, terror, terror is coming. So I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Do you think we're going to see a black swan event this year? Something's going to happen. That's they're going to use the eclipse to do some sh something shady, and then they're so they're hyping all this other shit up just to, yeah. They want you to look at the National Guard that they're putting out for traffic control. I think I actually read that they're right. They're going to help with traffic control. And last time I checked, it gets dark at night also, so they're not <laughs> out there every night doing traffic control. So something else is going on. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. And I'm trying to wrap my mind around, you know, okay. So they're saying false be prepared, false, false, yeah, false, false flag, uh, you know, a lot of people think that uh, there won't be an election, right? That something will happen and they'll get shut down. And uh, a lot of people are talking about war. Like <laughs> Maybe they'll use the darkness of the eclipse to swap out that Biden clone, you know, just. Well, the flat earthers don't even think that the sun is aligned yet to even have an eclipse. I keep coming across these videos where they're like, <laughs> no, last September it stopped moving for five days and now it, it'll be next to it, but it won't eclipse it. Like, what the hell? Right, because it, they can't account for the eclipse of the sun, actually the Earth's sun going around the Earth being a little wider right. on one side, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah, I go down a lot of conspiracy holes, but Flat Earth is just, I know some of you guys out there. You're into you know it. what? I ain't talking shit. I'm just saying I can't go there yet. I'm not there. I, I, I tell you what, I can't say no because, because I Because of parallel everything. universes, right? This could be a parallel universe and it could very damn well be flat. <laughs> like, Look, that's it's what probably I'm a simulation. So oh, right I there. absolutely believe this is a simulation. And that's, you know, that's why I actually started doing the beyond the arc podcast is because before if you would have at a time when you would have said hey you you know joe rogan i would have said yeah i love fear factor you know back in the good old days i had uh like this vision of uh uh me doing a political talk show i, I didn't even have a word for podcasts at the time you know right called broken clocks and so flash forward you know uh it was a couple years ago i was doing uh, like a scrabble anagram program with my name and you know you could do you could use three letter words and so it would just put list and list of words that would fit using your name 
So then four letter words. And by the time I got to five letter words, it was just master, mind, and hour. And I was like, oh, I'm smart <laughs> enough to get two words out of that. That's cool. That's how you got your your handle. That's it. I'm not I'm not actually a, a, a egomaniac. That's my 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 mom gave me that technically. <laughs> We're all egomaniacs at the end of the day. Right. That's what it is to be human, I think. Well, and that's what I was getting cleaned up for the show and I was taking a shower. I realized that I spend 90% of the time in my shower from the neck up. Right. You know, so my I'm my <laughs> I'm my own shower oligarchy on my head, you know, the rest of my body is just the that's but it takes, funny. takes a little while to get this chin main. I agree, John H. Glory. John H. says it is a simulation of a holographic universe. I absolutely do believe that. Well, I yeah, because it. you can actually get all the information of something on the surface of it. So you don't actually have to have the mass of something until you interact with it. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of like that player one. You know, we're technically kind of just walking on this treadmill and the whole universe moves underneath us. Oh, uh, man, that's a mind melting thought. <laughs> I don't think I've smoked enough to wrap my mind around that. But I sure. do do a lot of uh, research and study into, you know, the, uh, the all the different theories, you know, well, parallel well, universes, you know, star gates. Like I'm, I'm watching all of that crap. Well, and that's you can kind of explain that. Fermi paradox, stuff like that, where, you know, you can't, you can either tell how fast something's going or where it's at, but you can't do both. Right. It's because, and you can't, it's not really actually there until you look at it. Until you look at it. Right. Right. And it's like the, the split line where they were shoot, they would shoot electrons through the gaps and it should, if it's a wave, it would go in a, in a spread. And if it, but was, it goes uh, around, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it does both. And yeah, yeah so it will, move as a wave unless you're looking at it or even if a computer is observing it if it's observed at all it will move differently than if it's not observed so just the fact that something is noticing it changes its state of being well you know things have changed so much science-wise since we went to school i mean i went to school early 80s you know mostly the 80s and uh, i i you know i look at uh, qu quantum physics now and string theory and those were all just a fucking uh, you know a pipe dream when we were in school so uh you know the ramifications of those things being you know somewhat some of them proven you know and now we've got hydron the hydron collider what do you think the hydron collider is really for <sighs> Are they punching into other universes? They, other they could. They definitely could. They're, they're just, they're, it's fuck around and find out. That's all it is. It's yeah, a fuck I, around I, and find, I think it's, it's fuck around and find a, out. It's a trillion dollar fuck around and find out toy. Well, and if, if you grow up in faith and religion, a lot of people think that, you know, they are uh, uh, unreleasing the fallen ones who have been trapped, you know, God's <laughs> trapped them down there. And and now the demons are coming across on this side, which, you know, when you watch stuff like uh, Stranger Things, right? I mean, uh, that's the, the, the upside, upside down. down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, well, could the upside down be real? And, uh, you know, could we have opened another dimension and we're... We're letting these. Um, oh yeah, mathematically, reptilian people in or supposed to be other dimensions. There have to, there has to be higher dimensions, right? There There's, has to be. There. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. Well, I just read something where they were saying that light. There was something that move, was moving fast enough that it was popping dimensions. I got. I should have. Oh, that'd should've be cool. Tag that. Yeah. Wow, cool. what could move so fast to be popping dimensions? Yeah, <laughs> That's it was, crazy. yeah. It Would it destroy that dimension? Would that universe then? Or are they just popping? Well, no, if it's slow enough to go to the second dimension, that's not a big deal for us because we're in the third, third well, if we're in the fourth dimension with time. It, it gets so I know, it gets, so oh, and the human mind it can't even wrap uh, itself around the Absolutely thought not. of the we'd fourth be, or fifth or sixth dimension. It's not, we're not capable of yeah, it because we have it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you go insane the minute you opened your eyes and, you know, right. Right. Had serious beer goggles. I guess I could probably get through there. I've been like that a couple of times where I was looking six dimensional through beer goggles. <laughs> I, I got to admit, I've been there quite a few times too, <laughs> for sure. 
Uh, let's see. I thought I had I just, it. I just know if I get into the sixth dimension, I crawl on all fours till I get to a side and then walk down, get down the Well, hallway. do you think that that is the same thing as uh, having in, uh, like an experience on uh, acid or DMT? Do you think that those are the same dimensions that we would be interacting with or different, a higher dimension? You know, I... I did mushrooms once where I saw basically it was like the cheap candy, can, uh, the candy thanks or Halloween candy corn, you know, candy how corn. it's like orange and yellow and brown. Right, right. That's what I saw in, you know, I, I always thought like tripping would be like rainbow colors and stuff. It was just kind of a like they sell you on TV, right? Right. Yeah. right. No, it was a kind of a greenish brownish orange. It was a rainbow, but it was kind of or you know, like layers. It was kind of like we're like coffee layers. We need to have the coffee cream around the top and then right. it mixes and then you have the dark stuff on the bottom. But I knew I was walking and I just lost all vision, but I could see when I would turn my head, I could see that those whatever those colors were just blocking my eyes. I was actually seeing shapes that were there, right. but I couldn't comprehend them. And was I peeking through the curtain? Maybe. Why not? <sighs> I think I went to a dimension. I've, I, you know, I think I went to a, a couple of bad places a few times, but I went to a very good dimension once, which it was like a uh, a meadow and it had flowers. And I remember stepping over like fallen stumps, and there was trickling brooks and grass and like little bunnies and butterflies. And I probably was gone in my head maybe two minutes, but it, when I came back, I fucking was convinced I had been there for hours and hours like how long have I been gone what do you mean I just got back no I've been there for for hours and hours it was the craziest thing well and that's kind of what I always thought is if you've got simulation theory you put that to the side but you still have your multi-universe your multiverse multiverse yeah and so they say like every time you make a decision you can split going one yeah, way or the split other the timeline right. right so if that's actually simulation that would follow that that's a if and or path that you're following Choose your own adventure so, right? right is it positive or negative and if you're doing a hallucinate you could fuck you the 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 one or two which way you're going you can Put actually yeah you could actually hop over to a whole another timeline a whole another program because yeah. that mushroom changes like your IP ad or like you, your, your IP address. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. It just flips you into a whole nother, whole nother program for a minute. And after that clears up. It's a different uh, frequency, I would think, actually, at the end of the day, because it's all frequencies, right? right. So yeah, whatever. Absolutely. I absolutely believe that. Uh, I think that it probably is set up that way. Right. And And how often do you wonder? what the other use that made those different choices are doing do they have it better like that's right. what I don't, like right. god damn it is the version of me that's not living in the trailer park you know well, like, one of the the shit posts that i always throw up is you know in the multiverse there's a there's an infinite number of earths that don't suck shit and unfortunately i'm stuck in this one the worst. insert usually chink you know chink yuger is usually yeah. what I do. i'm here with chink I really think that maybe somewhere, you know, we were all coming into uh, 2012 thinking that it was the end of times, right? The Mayans had uh -huh. predicted the, the great apocalypse. And if you look at the, my consciousness changed so drastically uh, around that time. It was, it was the, the awakening. awakening. It truly was the awakening. And we were waiting for something physical on this realm to the happen. The big boom was inside, not the outside. The big boom was here. You're absolutely right. I swear to God, I look back and I see it happen. I think we had another shift maybe in 2014 and in 2016. Definitely we had a shift in 2016. But yeah. the consciousness changed. And I know my own consciousness changed from 20. Well, I started in about 20 or two, 08 is when my awakening started. But I didn't get there until I got away from Big Pharma really i had to get off of big pharma in order to have my awakening absolutely well and that's our the computer now ai is being absorbed into our consciousness it's part of our collective yeah. and because it is it's our 
consciousness is going to evolve Great. faster as well at the speed of science. I swear to God, time's speeding up. I feel like time is so much faster now than it was for me 20 years ago. Maybe that's because you get older. Time speeds up as you get sure. older, right? Sure. I know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Very comfortable. The Bernie. Yeah, I hear you ran for. Uh, let's see. I got a couple of more uh, memes. Let me pull this one up. See what this one says. People like playing dumb. I believe that deep down, pe many people uh, believe a lot of conspiracies are true, but they steer away from doing any research so they don't have an obligation to change. Uh, they stay wrapped up in their cocoon on lot of lies stuck in a synthetic reality. Unfortunately, at some point, those lies will be unraveled. Do you think people uh, uh, intentionally uh, stay, won't go look at stuff? Oh, yeah. Ignorance is bliss. 100%. Absolutely. If I, I wish I didn't know the shit I knew. I, sometimes when I'm thinking about getting a lobotomy, You're gonna sell I really, like I've really thought about getting a lobotomy. <laughs> I'm going to go back into the matrix. I get uh, it. I, I think that too. Sometimes. Where's that red? Where's that? Where's that pill? Where's that blue pill? Yeah. Where's right. the blue pill? Got to taste that steak, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Jilly, what's up? We're just hanging out, talking conspiracies and uh, shooting the shit. We got bad cookies here. We got 42 hanging out on YouTube. We got a bunch Sweet. on the Rumble and the Rockfin. Hey, Rumble, what's up? Bird cage or Birdhouse Blues is over there with Worthless Eater. Sorry. Good to see all of you guys. Yeah, we're just no I'm show. so we're... chatty. I wasn't even paying attention to the chat. Uh, yeah, I haven't been paying attention either. We're just hanging out and, uh, you know, getting to know each other. And uh, I want to do this more with you guys. Like, if you want to talk. Come hang out with me in the trailer park. We'll talk conspiracies and uh, the Matrix and anything else you want to talk about. Absolutely. Uh, so you do a lot of politics-focused stuff, right? Yes. Well, uh, that uh, Beyond the Arc was uh, Charlie Brown and Stay Balanced, and that was their political show. And Charlie asked me to come in just to throw in a couple one-liners and stuff. So at that point, at this point, that's basically I'm uh, actually got so I can use the soundboard so I can start throwing in sound effects and stay in current with the chat and throwing the chats up and stuff so yeah that's kind of my role over there at this point but yeah I have a political opinion just about just about anything and that's why I tell him I was like none of, don't quote me if you want to fact check me please do everything's my own opinion yeah uh, I don't see like sometimes like Stan and Charlie are good at like forest forest uh Oh, I want to say like a botanist. They, they're good at studying trees and studying leaves and looking at root structures and stuff. And, and, and they focus on the trees. I'm more like a truck driver where if I'm focusing on the trees, I'm going to run into one of them. So I, I, I got to keep the trees in the peripheral and keep my eye down the road. I, I, I get it. I get it. Uh, well, let's see what else did I bring us? Hmm, I've got a meme here. Uh, the Matrix is collapsing and the whole world not only sees it, but fills it. It's an energetic process. Yeah, I feel like the energy is changing. I, I think I'm learning to uh, really feel the energy around me where before I was, uh, you know, benign to it or, you know, I never noticed it. Right. Energy. Yeah, I, there's, I notice a lot of weird shit happening that I would probably just blow off normally, but, it, you know, it keeps repeating yeah. You know, and it's like they say yeah, that's the universe's way it's of a pattern. Yeah, when right. you see patterns out there, uh, that is, uh, you know, we like to blow it off as coincidence, but no, it's not a coincidence. Well, that, that's what we're put, or that's part of our base DNA is pattern recognition. And maybe that's why we're here, you know, why we've kept that in our DNA. That's why we see faces in everything. Every time you see a cloud, I do. It has a nose or, yeah, you know, a, an orange or everybody sees uh, Jesus in a piece of toast. It's because we have facial, we we're born to recognize the face, hopefully of your mother, I would assume would be. I would assume face. that's where that comes from. Yeah. Right. right. But you get, as soon as you see a face, it kind of looks like you. So you're looking for it. And as a baby, your eyes are really blurry to begin with. So you got to look for something that looks like a blurry face. Is that two eyes and a mouth? I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna yeah, you're right. That's probably where that comes from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I would say. I, I, I did that the other day. I walked in the bathroom and I looked down at the towel and I swear to God, I saw a face in the towel. And, yeah. I, and I told myself that's the human reaction, like in my head, every time I see, you know, a face somewhere, I'm like, oh, yeah, you're doing that human thing again, where we uh, see faces and everything. I, I don't know how much of, of uh, you know, so much is implanted in our DNA that comes from our ancestry, right? And we, we were always kind of taught like, no, nope, you're you and, uh, you know, you form your own experiences by the things that happen to you. But now as I get older and I've had kids and now I see my grandkids, I go, no, fuck that. That's DNA. Man. Uh, <laughs> that was not well, learned. And you, this is one of those times where I'm going to start throwing out numbers and you could probably need to fact check this stuff. But it, the we're the, our closest primate family is chimpanzees, right? And chimpanzees, the difference between them and their DNA sample would be 1%. There's a 1% variability right. in their DNA. And human beings have 0 0.001 variability in their DNA, which means at one point we we're that we were all come from the same 50 people. Everybody yeah. on this planet came down from the that's what same the Bible says, or unless you believe the Anunnaki. Yeah, they, you know. Well, the Anunnaki were the ones that were keeping us like cattle. They were, they were yeah. the yeah, we were here from, to harvest gold, right? Well, it was from uh, Lord of the Rings, they were the orcs. Orcs. They were huge beasts. Christy Teigen shit. <laughs> that would that would keep us like we keep cattle. Yeah. It would be like if we got cattle down to the last. It had a huge disaster, and all the cattle that we have stopped getting fed, and there were only fifty left that got that were able to walk away and survive whatever catastrophe killed all of us. The last fifty cattle. And that's why we're called. Go that's why the Jews call it goyim. They call us cattle because we we're the last 50 that came, get, got away from the orcs from. So also the we got away from them. <clears throat> well, if you think about it, you have all these caves in the Middle East that can hold 10,000 people. Oh, yeah. Miles Look and miles and miles and miles. Look at Turkey. Turkey's got whole fucking cities down there. Now, tell me, did they build that to protect themselves from a comet that they had no idea was coming? Yeah. Or no. did they build that to protect themselves from something that was too big to get into the entrance? Well, I was going to ask you about Graham Hancock and uh, what you think about, you know, I definitely believe that there was a, something that happened at the Younger Dryas. I've been out to Eastern Washington. I've seen what's out there. I think the pyramids are the only thing that survived the Younger Dryas. I think I that's... think so, too. I think so. Well, the pyramids and we have some runes that were finding down in the jungles yeah. in the global south, right? Uh, they, they, they were definitely, yeah, they were definitely connected by these ley lines and uh, i think there was a there was either another civilization or we were what was left of that civilization yeah no i think the one that was before us well was obvious i think i don't think i know that they were more advanced than we are at this oh, moment yeah. because they built the pyramids and we could not build Look the pyramids at this very moment couldn't do it we couldn't do yeah. it absolutely not With absolutely this, all we can do is build tanks we can blow shit apart but build it if you want to spend $3 billion a year instead of giving it to Israel, fuck it, build a pyramid. I'd, I'd vote for that. I would vote for that too. Just and you know, a Egypt, stupid worthless pyramid. Fuck Egypt do it. is the gatekeeper of that freaking actual knowledge and history, right? And we're just under the Western of the media's uh, version fucking of, of it, right? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, I don't believe anything that Egypt has told us or that, what is that council that that one fraud guy runs, you know, the head of equities, oh, uh, dude, yeah, you know, you know oh, who yeah. I'm talking about, oh, right? Yeah. He's been oh forever. God. Yeah. Yeah. Dark, they, the Mitch McConnell of Egypt. <laughs> the Mitch McConnell of Egypt. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. You're still watching Rogan. I still watch Rogan too, gamer. I, I, I don't know. I don't put as much, um, you know, Wait into Rogan as I used to for sure. I watched him the other day when he had on. Uh, yeah, it depends on who he has on. Yeah, he had on that. Uh, oh, the super smart. Well, was super smart. Uh, he did uh, the singularity. Kurt. I keep. I'm gonna say Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt. Uh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Oh. oh. 
anyway, he invented the Wurlitzer computer and he predicted that we would, a uh, computer would beat men at chess in 40 years, yeah, yeah, yeah. 4,000 years or whatever. And he made all, kept hitting all these benchmarks to how smart. Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about and I follow his work. Jason Burmis does a lot of good uh, work on so, uh, Thank you, Kurt's Will. Kurt's Wild. Thank you, Popeye. Kurt's Wild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was on Rogue. Kurt's well, thought, yeah. Kurt, if Kurt's well thought, oh, says it, be you better awesome. be scared by it. That's what I've taken away from what I've learned about Kurt's well. I mean, yeah. there's, but, he was former CIA, right? Uh, he, he, yeah, I don't know. Scientist. You know, just, the guy's a brainiac. Like, right. he knows technology. And he's funny. He's a character, too. Like, he's something out of a, a, a Hunter S. Thompson novel, if you ask me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Popping all, he's trying to pop all these youth pills so he can stay long enough yeah, to talk to his dad. And, yeah. Right rebuild his dad but yeah. it was kind of sad because joe was you know joe rogan was like trying to interview him and yeah he, even if he could live forever he better hope that he can get some of that step back because he was just joe was just running circles around him and it was like no, he was just on this like yet. one track and moving really slow oh, it's really like, yeah if you're a fan Chomsky it's it's hunt. tough yeah chomsky's another one that uh chomsky should have just shut his mouth and retired because i oh. think he's ruined his legacy i used to put so well, much and, as soon know. as he equated health care to candy for children after he'd already been on medicaid oh, yeah. for 30 fucking years <laughs> yeah, i just yeah, wanted yeah. to slap the taste out of his mouth right uh, yeah. uh, done he said some pretty stupid shit during COVID. You know, I was so disappointed to see a huge swath of the uh, independent left or, you know, the pushback left that fell for the COVID BS narrative. I mean, not I don't even care if you believe in COVID or not, but they went along with every bit of it. Lock those schools down. Get off the beach. You know, like uh, Chris Hedges, uh, Norm Chomsky. I mean, there was there were so many of them. Like, what the hell? You got Abby Martin. Like, you guys get that the government does this shit. You understand big pharma. So what the hell are you doing? Well, I knew I got the I got the first and second thing my Bob I got those right, two right. things and I even then I knew I shouldn't but because I care give for my mother-in-law exactly right I get it I have a mother-in-law right now. <laughs> I really didn't feel I had in retrospect I had every but I didn't feel like I had the right to push my agenda on to her safety but I am in an area that's very close to Colorado Springs, where they have the big Air Force. Oh, yeah, I've been there. And in October of 19, or was it 18, they had the big intermilitary Olympics yeah. in outside of Wuhan. And then all of these military people came back to their respective countries. And in my town, in my son's school, we had in October of 19, we had a double uh, virus that went through. One was whatever. Yep. And the second one was a mystery virus. Yeah. And that was the last. Anybody ever heard of the mystery virus? And then fast I had forward, yep. all of a sudden COVID pops up somewhere that popped up. I was like, fuck, we've had COVID here for two months. What are you talking about? This? Yeah. Yeah, we, I'm in the York. Seattle area. Of course, we got it uh, officially. We were one of the first cities, right? right. And my, I had my daughter was in a rehab center in pretty much like downtown Seattle with like 500 other freaking people. And I was going there every weekend to take the grandkids and then pick them up and bring them all the way back. And yeah, we brought it back from, and, and when I went to the doctor for it, the doctor was it called it a coronavirus. And this was in December of 2019. Like, oh, well, you've got to. And there was people yeah, just laid yeah. out in the office. Everybody was sick. Everybody was putting masks on. And we weren't doing the mask thing back then unless you were sick. Right. You you know. So, yeah, that was absolutely. So, I mean, this narrative that they rolled out, of course, people took it. I, I would have 
I would have, I let her because it wasn't my choice. It was her choice. Right. But, um, I, I but I don't condemn anybody who did take it. I, I think that, uh, we need to advocate for those who got injured by it, who did take it. And we need studies on what the long-term effects for the next 20, 30 fucking years wow. for people who took it are going to be. The one that scares me is I keep, I hope it's just YouTube, TikTok bullshit videos but I keep seeing all these morticians that are pulling out these eight foot. That's scary. You know, I lost my mom during this. My mom uh, just mysteriously dropped dead in August of 2021, the summer of August of 2021. So she had been through a lot of the stress of COVID, right? We've been locked uh, down right and the middle of it. Yeah. all of that, right? And so I wonder now, you know, God, could she have had clots? What the, what the hell, you know? And we got so few answers back in those days. If you had a loved one that passed on during the big COVID lockdown, you didn't have funerals. You didn't have get togethers. You didn't have memorials right. i mean yeah, you have to you couldn't even they were i barely got off. into the funeral home to make the arrangements for her you know they had to let us in a back door and you had to put a double mask on and blah 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 you know i, I mean it was a, a crazy time to lose somebody so there was no interaction with the uh coroner's office there i mean i i barely got a fucking phone call from them after they did her autopsy i mean it was so strange those days because uh, bureaucracy was barely limping along. If you remember, nobody was going to work and, you know. Well, during the very height in our area, mom had a stroke. So we had to take, well, it was the first of May. That's it's like, yeah, she had oatmeal. Yeah, she had another stroke. But the first, the first one was during the very height of COVID and they had to have special permission to have my wife be able to go into the hot, just or to like go anybody, into the hospital. Oh yeah. You couldn't see anybody. How many people died lonely and scared? Yeah. Because we locked them in a fucking room by themselves. So we're not allowed to talk about it. Don't you talk about it. The, the shit lives in the dims. They don't want to bring that up or, you know, they, uh, yeah. You don't want to address anything that's excess deaths because those numbers don't really mean oh, anything. Like Como. And what he was doing in New York with people. I mean, and we're not going to revisit any of this anytime soon because they're keeping us so fucking preoccupied oh, with, uh, you know, World War Three and Trump orange man bad. And uh, here you're starving. Have you been to the grocery store fucking lately? I went shopping yesterday. I about fell over two grocery bags it was 115 fucking dollars. I don't even know what I got. Like I got nothing. Like, uh, that's what I went to the store and that, I made that comment. I went and got $90 in groceries and carried it with one arm. So I'm either getting super super strong or just super bent over. And they're they're still they're just gonna keep gaslighting us, fucking lying to us and raising prices. They need to be raising the interest it's rate, a, but instead they're gonna be like, no, no, we're gonna lower it. It's all good. No, they're intentionally keeping the food prices high. That's what's yeah. keep that's you got to some of it's keep, price gouging, some of it's inflation because of the amount of money that we've allowed them to fucking print in the last five years. I don't even think it's just price gouging. I think it's an intentional plan to keep you from being able to store food yeah. and, to, and stock up on I'm food. I'm getting into my food storage. So right? yeah. But right. if, if you don't have a food stock and all of a sudden somebody says, Hey, let's general strike. Okay. That's going to last three days. And then all of a sudden it's a hunger strike. I, I have pushed general strike for so many years. You know, I'm up here with Shama's Sawant and, and Shama's always been amazing about pushing general strikes. We get, you know, she, she has been effective um, on the ground, more effective than any politician I've actually seen anywhere in the United uh, States. If you want to start a general strike, you need about a $3 billion mutual aid fund to go behind. Exactly. It. Sure. Exactly. Because Try building a mutual strike. aid fund right now when uh, the avenues are like GoFundMe or, or these uh, entities, PayPal, that'll just come in and take the money like we saw with the trucker protests, right? But they it, tried to do mutual funds and they got shut down. It won't happen. I mean, it, it couldn't happen. We, we could take the $3 billion we give Israel, put it into mutual aid, but they won't put $3 billion into their own assured destruction. They, they need us. Keep that money the, here. <laughs> yeah. They, they need us at the end of that leash making as little as possible to keep us, first of all, not eating as much. They realize that health care is the reason that they can't keep this health care system going. Oh, so it's if so they broken. keep us skinny... At least they'll cut back on heart attacks. So they're doing us a favor by keeping us hungry. 
Yeah. No, and I am more hungry this year than I have been any time in my fucking life. And I grew up poor in the fucking trailer park. Like, uh, uh, go get a meal anywhere, even at fast food, which is straight poison. But it's ten, fifteen dollars just for a meal. Like, uh, you know, and we're seeing closures across the country, the big box stores. So we're going to have food deserts everywhere. Uh, we already do, but it's going to get much worse. Uh, the, but then where do we shop? They're going to funnel us into the few places they leave for us. And that's what we'll have. Oh, I got eggs and I got pot and I'm growing <laughs> some tomatoes and I'm growing some me peppers. Too. I'm growing peppers. Thanks to Snarky. Snarky set me up with a major pepper farm. Nice. Thank you, Snark. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, and now what we're hearing that they want us to register our gardens. They tried to pull that shit uh, and unroll it out on us a couple of years ago, but we freaked out. And then they were like, ah, we were just kidding. You don't need to register your garden. Well, if, if you're an HLA, they could, you know, come in and start measuring, you know, oh, that's always supposed to be a four by four garden. You got four by four by two. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we live in crazy times. I think that we ended up in the craziest of uh, split off timelines. I don't yeah. remember what happened. Yeah, this is a weird one. It, you know, and just like even the names like Sam Bankman Freed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was the CIA freaking ploy, wasn't he? He was just a funnel money. That's all he oh. was. Yeah, it's stupid stooge. They, they just kept him high and horny, put, locked him in a cabana down there and in the uh uh is he virgin islands is that where he was i think virgin? he was virgin yeah. islands yeah the, the, the islands formerly known as virgin after epstein <laughs> got done with them or epstein got done with them yeah uh freaking epstein that's a story that's never gonna go away right yeah i probably shouldn't even have mentioned that name oh i've He's, done epstein dive on here I, good. I don't think i'm in that much trouble here let me pop this meme up real Bruce fast Einstein and the Eastine band Oh my God! Have you seen Bruce Springsteen? He looks—he looks like he uh, is morphing. Yeah. Uh, chill, puff, puff. Come on, puff, puff, pass, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <that's> <laughs> smoking yeah. that apple. I like this uh, Charles Bukowski um, quote here. It says the difference between a democracy and a dictatorship is that in a democracy you vote first and take orders later. In a dictatorship, you don't have to waste your time voting. <laughs> <laughs> Bukowski, do you, do you ever get into Bukowski a little bit? I I really like him. I have not, but that's uh, he was a writer, kind of a he, he was he was a drunk. He lived with uh, uh, you know uh, hookers and uh, drug addicts. I mean, he was kind of up there with the Hunter S. Thompson. I, I, I was gonna say, sounds like old man. The sea meets old man. The trailer park. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly. So I love his quotes. He, he gets pretty uh, down there and nasty. Jilly says every pharmaceutical has a source, a natural source. Yeah, Jilly, you got to get away from the synthetics, right? That's I always look for. It. Oh, is it natural? Does it grow in? Uh, does it grow in nature? Yeah, he was a major junkie. So, yeah, he was. He was a major junkie. Yeah. But I, I think that's what I liked about him, you know, because you keep it fucking real. What, is somebody who's a junkie ain't going to lie to you and blow smoke up your ass because they got much bigger fucking problems. <laughs> right? yeah, bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I, that's what keeps it honest and real. Let's see. I got a few memes. I got a few memes for us. This one's cute. I, I mean, love that one. I love how fast that was one. that kid going? I love <laughs> that one. And uh, the way it was, no internet, no cable TV. We hung out with friends. We went cruising around the town. We went to bonfires. We listened to great music and never realized how great it was until it was over. You're going to make me cry. I know, right? That's yeah. the way it was. Uh, I could see myself on, talking to the girl, leaning up next to the car, trying to. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what uh, are you doing tonight? Where are you going? Uh, 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 well, I, I, the shit, a few generations away are probably never going to have cars. I mean, they're trying to take uh, the vehicles away from the American public, you know, via a couple of different ways. Um, <clears throat> gas is so damn expensive, insurance, and then parts. Try getting parts nowadays because they normally shipped out of China and we don't have that good working relationship with China anymore because Congress has decided after NAFTA and selling us off to them that, hey, they're bad. So try getting parts. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're just taking the car away from the American people and they're going to they're slowly doing it. They'll fade it out. I mean, they got their agendas 2030. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I figure 
She had yeah, I'm, years so, I'm still years. not sure how California is going to pull off getting rid of all the gas engines when they can't keep the power on just with the air conditioners. I know. I know. This whole green deal is a fucking joke. It's a lie. You know, when I first got into politics, I, of course, I was shouting for a green new deal. And but <laughs> here's the thing. It's a it's a corporate entity on its own now, and it's not being regulated. They're selling it off to their buddies, and it's all about profit. It's nothing to do. It's called greenwashing. Yeah, it's greenwashing. It has nothing to do with saving the fucking planet. If anything, it's just going to bleed you, tax you, and take things from you. And yet we scream and beg for our own demise. And I was stupid enough to go along, just like every other cog that was in Bernie's, uh, you know, clown car screaming for this shit but now i've stepped back and it it made a lot of people uh you know go against me that i were allied with for many years because i was like whoa whoa you guys maybe we should be rethinking this green new deal i i think they're selling us a a lemon here you know oh god how dare i you don't want to save the planet you climate denier (laughs) well and you know unpopular opinion in three two one we are not even to our climactic optimum. What we are doing is we are still recovering from the ice age. Yes, yes. Oh, you so, Republican, how dare yeah, you? Yeah, right, that? right. <laughs> so there Don't was, follow the science. When you, when you look at, at, at uh, Al Gore's little ramp thing of oh, the temperature, God. what he Why doesn't he show you- anything Al Gore says? What he doesn't show you is the rest back here. Yeah. Where, it's been going up since the ice age and yeah. then before the ice age how it was clear up here if you compare clear up to here where we're still right here we are that's the reason we don't have the megafauna where you know you think of when you think of the dinosaurs you think of the huge trees that yeah. would, with the huge leaves that they could eat we don't have those huge leaves because there's not enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere like there was it's all trapped in the ice so all that has to come out of the ice. Everybody's going to have to move inland a little bit. You know, you're going to have to give up that riverside. Which that people have been moving there. inland for the last 12,000 years. Yeah. If you <laughs> want to find Atlantis, you need to start looking just, you know, right, out, exactly. out to, off the coast about two or three miles. That's so you believe in Atlantis. Find. I believe in Atlantis too. I oh, think, yeah. it, I think yeah. it was a real place. And I don't, I, you know, I, I see YouTube ones where it's like, just you know, west of the uh, Mediterranean through right. the, the, rocks the Rock of Gibraltar, Gibraltar right? It's off the Azores or whatever's out there, and that could be. I see that there's they talk about the eye, of the desert, right? And, L- Libya, Syria, yeah, Syria. That one, that looks, Libya, I think that's Libya. actually kind of small, and I think it probably, if anything, I think it might have been that at the end of Bimini road somewhere. And it's just under about a mile of crushed seashells down, you know, in Bermuda somewhere. Well, it was covered by mud. Exactly. So it would have dried. That was 12,000 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. There there was a, there was a ramp that came out of Atlantis that went uphill to the mountain of Florida. And so it's just been eroded away and the mountain, the water's coming up to the top of the mountain of Florida. Right. And that's, you know, (laughs) <laughs> I love this conversation. We have like covered everything in this conversation. Oh. Parallel universes, Atlantis, <laughs> you name it. We've talked about it today. I had a list of stuff here that we haven't even, I had a, I put a list of all the jobs that I've had just in case. Oh God, you're one of those like me. I've had, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. So it's about that long. <laughs> I think and that then I started to try to put in, I tried to put them in order. And then that just got crazy. So I gave up trying to put them in chronological. As an American, uh, you know, who came up during the 90s, like I didn't start working until probably 91 or 92. No, actually, my first job was painting in 90. I mean, I've taken whatever job I can. And so, of course, well, I know how to do everything. I was super lucky when uh, cigarettes were. 75 cents a pack and gas was a buck a gallon my grandfather was a milkman and so he had the milk truck and would drive the county yeah and uh so they would put a little grocery store on the side of the milk cooler so we had the dairy store and grocery and so at like 15 
I was in there ringing up people and yeah. I was, and they were paying me like 15, 12, 13 bucks an hour at 15. Ooh, damn. And, well, yeah, I'm sure it was like double what minimum was because of grandma, it was grandma. Yeah. It yeah, was paying exactly. me. Right. Right. And, uh, so I was like super lucky. I didn't have to do, although it was about what the kids were making that were detasseling because detasseling suck. If you ever you know what detasseling is where you, uh, so when the corn gets so high, it puts those little tassels out on the top. Yeah, yeah. And you have to go through on each corn stock and pull those off so they don't cross pollinate. Oh, okay. like, you don't want, you don't yeah, want. Yeah, 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 no, it makes sense. And so they have a tractor that has a big bar that goes across it with big chairs on it. So you got somebody on, you got uh, somebody going in between. I know what it looks like. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Flying down the aisles, pulling corn tassels off. And they would make, I think even back in, what would that have been? 82, something like that. They were making about 12, 13 bucks an hour. So that's probably what I told grandma, what kids were making nowadays. And that's how we got away with that one. Oh, those small town, those jobs. Yeah. Sadly, with automation coming in and taking over, uh, those, our kids and our grandkids, they're not going to have those opportunities that we did. And, you know, that I brought this is in a, this is my local town here. And I thought this was interesting. So this is an old Baskin Robbins shop uh, in my local town. And it says, good morning, Columb County. My wife and I purchased a donut shop called Duchess Donuts down in Mason County last year. And a couple of months ago, signed a lease on the old Baskin Robbins on 101. We are working on cu a cutting edge donut shop in addition to uh -huh. The amazing Olympic Mountain ice cream, hot and cold drinks, and other baked goods. Our kitchen will feature a high-tech robots that op their operation will be visible to everyone. Open early seven days. Uh, we hope that you know you come by for our donuts, blah blah blah. And it says at the end, "Don't worry, we will be hiring humans." So <laughs> we have our first animated uh, donut shop that uh, is going to be robotic apparently come into my my tiny ass little town like you, if this is here in my tiny ass little town i hate to see what the big cities are getting well you picked the one thing where i say huzzah you could pick <laughs> anything other but on here on that list was kroger and i would get i would go into kroger at 3 a.m to have the donuts ready by 5 a.m the, the donut diabetes maker. For the diabetes donuts for the people to be at, ready at 5 a.m so they could be to their slave job by 8 a.m and get that heart attack going so i yeah i had i had a moral dilemma about be i would be yeah i would get home i, I would go home at 11 a.m so yeah something like that so yeah i would go home before lunchtime yeah, I had a couple, quite a few jobs where I'd have to be there at like th three o'clock in the morning and I'd be done with my day by 11 a.m. Like ready to go <laughs> take a nap, right? Yeah, I I, I, I see these, uh, you know, tech robots coming in. I see a pizza shop like that. It's just going to uh, weed out the jobs that are there for the wow. working class, low class jobs, you know. Oh, you don't have a four year degree to, to work here. Well, and food prep, I think, is pretty demeaning and not to say that cooking is bad, but I know a robot's not going to spit on my Big Mac. <laughs> you know? I always say, don't fuck with the people who make your food, uh, man. I, worked, I, I see it. these Karens going uh, up, like why? Why would you do that to yourself? I forgot to put Pizza Hut on the list. I worked in P at Pizza Hut in college too. So I know the crap that those hooligans do. I was a hooligan, but at least I, yeah, I have a, I at least have a soul. Oh, I worked at Carlos O'Kelly's. That was a Mexican restaurant, Carlos O'Kelly's. Kind of seems like I recognize that name. Uh, so, uh, so I always had a serious feeling towards about the safety and health of food going, you know, that's food going to other people. And so I would get really annoyed when I would see people, you know, washing the counters with the mop, you know, stuff. <laughs> shit like that that went on yeah i just i couldn't find proper that. training right and, and so if i i saw it happen personally in that kitchen i know it happens in other kitchens too okay, yeah. so 
I, you just got to roll the dice. I don't know. Can it be eyes. worse than street food in a third world country? <laughs> I, oh, that's uh, what you ask yourself right. at the end of the day, right? Yeah, be, be grateful for what you have, I suppose it is. Uh, right. I wanted to talk to you about this Assange thing. We're hearing that there may be a plea deal that would end the 14-year uh, legal drama for Julian Assange. Uh, rumblings coming from the State Department. Do you believe it or not? It sounds like bullshit to me. I, yeah. <laughs> when it, when Julian's lawyers come out with that statement, then I'll start paying attention. I'll start really saying, huzzah, I'll throw a party, light a big joint, for sure. Yeah. But until that, I'm keeping my eye on them. Yeah, I think that this is uh, the State Department working on behalf of the Biden administration to try to quell and calm down some of the Assange activists so that way they can pick up their vote. Like, well, you know, hey, look, we're talking about giving him a deal. And then, uh, oh, psych, there was no deal. We never said there was a deal. You guys are the ones who said there was a deal. So I don't buy it. Like you said, tell the attorneys come out and they say it. But I, I I would understand if there was a deal and Julian decided to take it, though I don't know if he would. At this point, when you've given up as many years as he has, I don't know. Do you take the deal or not? Is, does your pride outweigh and keep you locked up, uh, you know, on principle, or do you just say, okay, well, he, no, he doesn't need the, the principle. The point's been made. There's no, there's I no agree. more principle. There's no more principle that, that there's no more squeezing any blood out of this rock. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so agree. Takes a deal I, I think it's, it's just a trick to get him on a Boeing 737 Max and get him to try and fly back to <laughs> Boeing 737. He'll have to hold the yeah. door all the way home, right. right? Or here. He's not. This isn't even his home. So yeah. Right. Uh, no, yeah. That's what he's got to fly back to Australia. Are you scared to fly nowadays? I know I am. Yeah. yeah. I was talking about that today. I was like, ooh, I don't. Maybe I'll drive when I go back to see the folks. You know. That's take what I was road thinking. Road. I was like, maybe my next trip I should drive. Just sure. take the time. Probably cheaper to rent a car anyways at this point. No, I don't know. I did see a flight the other day from Seattle to New York for like 179 bucks. I was like, oh, they must be getting desperate. <laughs> well, I saw that, uh, was it not U-Haul, the car rental Hertz guy, whoever, one of them got canned because he bought 100,000 Teslas that he's got to eat. I thought, oh, Tesla, I saw that. I saw I, that. I brought a Tesla. That way I don't have to pay for gas. I could drive all the way to whatever. It takes me a little more time. You know, let's have to stop for a half hour to fill up. I'd rather do that than pay, you know, $5, $6 a gallon for gas. Right. Right. Well, see, I live in the, I live in Washington. So we have a abundance of Teslas where I live. Like, cause I'm up here with all the yippee yuppies, you know, Right. Uh, Tesla's everywhere. Tesla's and uh, what's the yeah, Priuses. Oh my God. And they're the worst drivers. Like you have a fucking Tesla go motherfucker. <laughs> like, right. Well, step and on it. it'll go. I don't know how they do in the rain, but when it gets cold here, I see a lot of Teslas that are just move it. That just, I'm sure that they can move fast, but they, I think they have to drive slow <laughs> just to keep warm that battery up first. I don't know why they're doing that, but I see or maybe funny. it's just the one person that I live by. But yeah, they tend to like to do 40 and a 45 on the cold days, but they seem to do just fine when it's sunny. Well, who can afford one? Um, Shit, how much are they now? Like I've never, I've never sat in one. I've, I, I've, I've sat in one, but that's it. I've never rode in one. My my friend has a Prius and I've drove that thing. And that thing's the craziest car. Like it doesn't even sound like it's running. You don't know if it's running. And then uh, one time it just decided that it would drive itself. Like she got out of the car mm -hmm. and it kept driving down my road. Like, hey, where's your car going? Like, Well, I, I had one where I was walking, not paying attention. The guy's kind of, Tesla came and had, beep, and it scared the shit out of me. But thank God he, I mean, I, I wasn't mad at him. He saved yeah, my life. But yeah, I was, I was like, oh, yeah. yeah if he didn't honk, I would have kept right on walking. So as even as much as I want to give him the finger, I was like, thank you. Well, everything's yeah. going to be fully autonomous, right? In the next 20 years. I mean, that's what they were pushing for these self-driving cars that we were supposed to have by now. Uh, well, the technology didn't turn out to be that great. It was faulted is why they, we're not in there yet. I think they should do something. You know, they have uh, regulations about how loud your muffler can be on a car. 
they should have minimums about how quiet your car be, can be when it's going more than <laughs> six, seven miles an hour. I don't want your car sneaking up on me, motherfucker. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you're doing 10 miles an hour, at least it's got to play an ice cream truck tune or <laughs> make a fake Porsche a room, room noise. I don't give yeah, a fuck, but you know, you sure. can't be, you know, being yeah. able to do 40 miles an hour and not make a, a peep. You know, not just that clickety clickety of rocked on, you know, and stuck clack. in your tires. Well, of course, we'll not have a way to travel out of our 15 minute city, 15 minute cities very soon as it is. So it won't be a problem for any of us. You know, you won't leave yeah. your pod. You'll remotely log into your, uh, you know, your slave uh, job and <laughs> that'll be the end of it. I know I've kept you 20 minutes over, but this has been a great conversation. No, I'm fine. I was just, I was good to see if my wife sent me or showed me a video of this woman. It's kind of like, uh, oh, that trend that goes around. Of course, it, of course I am kind of meme things, but it was like, of course I'm running. It's, it's a woman jogging. And instead, I'm preparing for the 2030. I'm not jogging to get into my bikini. I'm jogging to prepare for 2030 right. when I'm going to have to escape the 15 minute city. <laughs> the 15 minute city. While yeah. I'm being chased by robo dogs because they, I can't use my car because they took my, my credit score away. And because I, yeah, I just. Because you know. said something about the government. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes, and was, that's exactly, sadly, what's coming for all of us. The social credit score, it has been implemented. I mean, it hasn't been implemented, but I, I promise you, they're keeping being track of you we know that on x we know that on facebook we know that with our banks like everything we do is surveilled from the minute you leave the house till you you know get home they know everything they yeah. like with our routers everybody's got routers in their houses like literally they know every room you're in when you're in a room <laughs> like well i used to laugh no at that norman keita that's in chat that oh so it's always message redacted he'll throw it up for three seconds i'm starting to think he might be the smartest one of us all Ooh. That Norman, you ever seen him in chat? He'll like Norman. I don't know. I don't think I've seen him. Nikita, I can't. You guys know it. But what's his last time? I blanking on it right now. But he'll constantly be writing stuff in chat, and I think he must be Scottish because his or somewhere up in there. Scottish accent, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. But he'll write some really wacky shit, and then he'll let it float up three or four times. And then he'll it'll uh, he'll retract it. Huh? Yeah. I'll see, I'll keep an eye Kina, out for it. Cookies, oh, yeah. Okay, Norman okay. Kina. Kina, yeah. Nice. Uh, he might be the, he might be the smartest one of us all. Well, I know there's some out there, right? And uh, it's the ones you know. We want to look at people and judge them about what they think. And a lot of times, it's the ones that are furthest out there that are right. So I don't judge anybody anymore. Like, I'll take what you have to say. I'll take it in and I'll file it, and maybe it'll be useful for me five years down the road. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I talked to this guy one time. He told me about this. Well, and I used to think I would hear the quote: "The more I know, the less I. The more I think I know, the less I actually, actually do." Know. And that, yeah, and I'm starting yeah. to figure out what that kind of fucking means. It's like, oh shit, these rabbit holes have no bottom. Yeah, every yeah. rabbit hole just twists and goes into and another. They kind of into hole. another one, and yeah, they all. And at the end it of the day, end. they're all connected. Exactly, uh, it's like the roots under a tree. Uh, huh. so. Well, I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me on this Friday afternoon. It's been a fun Sean, conversation. It was an honor. Thank you. Uh, I, had I, blast. I had a blast. We had, so I, I knew that we would just, it would be like this. Oh, yeah. I could tell. Yeah, I'm in no hurry. We could do three or four more hours, but yeah, we just bumped this right into the back of Eric's show, but it, it was fun. Thank oh you. no, it's been fun. Eric's in the chat. Hey, Eric, what's up? I uh, yeah, I got to go write Beauty and the Boomer for tomorrow night. Right. You guys will have to join Oz and I for our Saturday night Beauty and the Boomer, and then I'm working on a really good uh, Trailer Park Pundit for Monday morning, and we're doing an uncensored, which means it's all the shit I can't talk about on YouTube Thursday. So uh, I got some, we're gonna talk about the the red heifer. Like we've got things to talk about, like uh, adrenochrome. I've got a couple of good segments, so that'll right. be fun. But I'll thank you there. so much, Mastermind Absolutely. Hour. Thank you so much, Roman. You join me anytime you want. You want something to talk about? You know, just hit me Absolutely. up, man. If you got something I've, to talk only about. Only thing I got is I'm gonna be on with Eric T in about what seven and a half, seven, seven eight, seven, four or five and a half hours, whatever. Well, how come channel. people follow you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Mastermind Hour on Twitter, Mastermind Hour on YouTube. Oh, and uh, my show Sunday is Beyond the Arc Politics on Revolutionary Blackout Network, Long Beach, the Long Beach chapter, CJ's jam there. 
It's uh, the Beyond the Art Politics. That's Sundays, so that's seven. So that's here we go, six p.m. on <laughs> Pacific, nine p.m. Eastern, and then tonight, Friday, I'm doing. Let's see, it's eight p.m. here, so seven p.m. Pacific, ten p.m. Eastern. Nice. Okay. Well, there's your mastermind math. Make sure that everybody in the trailer park, if you haven't gone out, make sure you're following Eric T. Red also in the chat. And uh, you sent me this amazing closing song that we're going to go out with uh, over on my Discord. Join the trailer park Discord. And uh, it's If the Doors Wrote Enter Sandman. This is interesting. And I really, really enjoyed it. I think the chat will too. Thanks, you guys, for joining us. And uh, thank you so much, Mastermind Hour. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. Let's check it out. I was too. I, I spin it. This is the first time I've heard this with headphones on. This it sounds is such great. A jam. I know. Dang it. I can't believe we crashed. Oh, you guys go check it out anyway. It's on YouTube. Oh, that makes me so mad. Let's see here. I'll run it again if I have. What, to. What's for, go, yeah, from the beginning. I will go again from the beginning. I don't know if my internet lagged. What's the heck happening here? We still got almost 50 hanging out on the YouTube. So hell, we'll do it again. <laughs> Let me, uh, let me prep for that one. Yeah, yeah, this is a good jam for sure. Okay, we're out of here. <laughs>